Okay, so you've got about 300 bucks, you're looking for a new tablet, and you're asking yourself, which one is actually better? The Samsung Galaxy Tab A8 or the entry-level iPad 9? When we look at the design, we immediately see some important differences. The iPad 9 still has the older style design with larger bezels on the top and the bottom, and a home button. In contrast, the Tab 8 has a more modern design with smaller bezels all the way around, which give it a cleaner look. It also means that although both tablets are about the same size, we're getting a larger 10.5 inch display on a Tab A8 versus 10.2 inches on the iPad 9. Now looking around the edges, both tablets have power buttons, volume controls, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which I'll come back to later on. For charging and accessories, the iPad 9 still uses the older lightning port, while the Tab A8 uses a USB-C port. Now personally, I'm stuck with both types of cables because my iPhone, my third generation AirPods, and even my AirPods Max still use a lightning cable. And at the same time, my Fold 3, all my Galaxy tablets, my Buds Live, my Galaxy Book 360, and my MacBooks all use USB-C. So I'm gonna have both types of cables all over the house regardless. So for me, it doesn't really make a difference. But if all your other devices use USB-C, Keep in mind that you'll need a dedicated cable for the iPad 9, and in general, USB-C is a more powerful and more versatile port. Now, another advantage of the Tab A8 is that it has a micro SD card slot, which allows you to expand the internal storage by up to one terabyte. Now, this is great if you wanna keep a ton of photo and video files on your tablet, but keep in mind that the storage is essentially only used for files and not for apps. It's still a factor because the files you store on the micro SD card aren't taking up any of your your internal storage, whereas on the iPad 9, everything, including photos and video, has to be stored locally. Finally, the Tab A8 has four speakers versus only two on the iPad 9, and there are some significant implications to this, which I'll cover in a gaming section. All around, when it comes to design, I'm going to give the edge to the Tab A8, and as far as portability, I'm gonna call it a tie. Another important difference is biometric authentication. So the iPad 9 uses Touch ID with the home button, while the Tab A8 uses face recognition with the front-facing camera. I'm not gonna say that one is definitively better than the other because it comes down to how you use your tablet, and ultimately, if I had my choice, I'd want both options like we have with the Tab S7. Now, probably one of the most important aspects of any tablet is the display. There are a few things that we wanna talk about, and let's also talk about how specs impact real-life use. With the Tab A8, we're getting a 10.5 inch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1200, a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and a pixel density of 216 pixels per inch. The iPad 9 has a smaller display at 10.2 inches, but a higher resolution of 2160 by 1620, an aspect ratio of four by three, and a higher pixel density of 265 PPI. Now the Tab A8 gives you a slightly wider display when you're watching content, and the aspect ratio is closer to the 16 by nine that you get from a lot of videos. So there are smaller black bars on the top and the bottom. The iPad 9's higher resolution means that you can fit more information on the display at once. So for example, if you're looking at a web page, you'll see more of the content without having to scroll. Additionally, the aspect ratio of four by three is very useful when you're taking notes or drawing with the Apple Pencil in portrait portrait mode because we're getting a wider canvas. The iPad 9 also has a fingerprint resistant coating, which makes a noticeable difference. It's not that it won't pick up fingerprints at all, but it definitely stays cleaner than the Tab A8, and I find myself not having to clean it as often with a microfiber cloth. Now, both are 60 hertz displays, but there are fundamental differences in the types of display that each tablet has. The iPad 9 does not have a fully laminated display, meaning that there's an air gap. On the Tab A8, the display, the top touch layer and the cover glass are fused into a single display assembly. For things like gaming, surfing the web, using various productivity apps or watching video, you're unlikely to notice this difference. But in general, I prefer a fully laminated display because the image looks like it's painted right on top of the glass. A fully laminated display is typically also better when you're using a stylus because the tip of the pencil looks like it's touching the content that's being created. Whereas on the iPad 9, you will see a bit of separation. Now in this particular case, while the iPad 9 is compatible with the first generation Apple Pencil, the Tab A8 isn't compatible at all with Samsung's S Pen. So you can't use the Bluetooth enabled S Pen that you get with the Tab S7 or S7 Plus, or even the basic S Pen that you get with the Tab S7 FE. Now, both displays work just fine for everything that I do from watching 
creating content to playing games, surfing the web, and using various apps. If the larger black bars when watching video are an issue for you, then the Tab A8 is a better fit. Personally, they don't bother me at all, and for everyday use, I prefer the sharper and higher resolution display on the iPad 9, as well as the fingerprint resistant coating, the 4x3 aspect ratio, and the Apple Pencil compatibility for note taking, sketching, and for marking up and signing documents. If you're looking for more of a laptop-like experience, then you may want to pick up a keyboard case. Now, the iPad 9 has a ton of excellent options from Apple and from third-party providers. Now, I've not been able to find a dedicated keyboard case from Samsung for the Tab A8, but I did find this other option that has a removable keyboard, and I'll share a link in the description. It's actually kind of neat because you can use the same case with and without the keyboard. When we look at processing power, we've got benchmarks, and then we have real life use. For single core performance, the Tab A8 scored 364 versus 1330 on the iPad 9. And for multi-core performance, we're looking at 1250 versus 3376. So we're getting substantially better performance on the iPad 9 for pretty much any type of task. But the real question is, does this have any kind of real life implications for the majority of users? And in this case, the answer is a resounding yes. Like whether you're opening and closing apps, switching between open apps, or between open tabs in your browser, or just navigating around the UI, the iPad 9 is extremely responsive. In comparison, the Tab A8 feels sluggish, laggy, and it feels underpowered for a current device. Now, that's not to say that you can't perform the same tasks, it's just that the user experience is not as smooth, and sometimes you're not sure if the Tab A8 is lagging or if a tap or a swipe wasn't registered. I'll get to how this impacts the gaming experience in just a moment, but first, let's talk about the camera and speed. Speakers. Now, this is another area where it's a split decision. Looking at the rear facing cameras, both are 8 megapixels, but the iPad 9 camera is simply better. It's more color accurate, it has better dynamic range, and it's more versatile in terms of features, frame rates, and image stabilization. I very rarely use the rear facing cameras on my tablets because the ones on my phones are so much better. So for me, the more important camera on a tablet is the front facing one, which I use for video calls. Again, the iPad 9 comes out ahead with a 12 megapixel camera versus 5 megapixels on the Tab A8. It's also an ultra-wide camera with center stage, which is a feature that uses artificial intelligence to identify and then track a subject as it moves through the frame. It can then crop the image to give the impression that the camera is following the subject. So in both cases, if you're looking for the better camera system, that's going to be the iPad 9. When we get to the speakers, things shift in favor of the Tab A8. The iPad 9 only has speakers on the bottom, so when you're holding it in landscape, mode, the audio only comes out to one side. Now, it actually does a pretty good job at projecting the sound, but it can't compete with the Tab A8. The four-speaker Dolby Atmos system has better audio quality, it offers more immersive and fuller stereo sound, and it's better for games where you need to detect which direction footsteps or other sounds come from. Before we get to battery life and gaming, let's talk about multitasking, apps, and operating system support. So for multitasking, I'm going to give the edge to the iPad 9. Both tablets have similar features, but again, the iPad 9 feels more responsive and working with multiple apps feels seamless. The iPad 9 can also be used as an additional display for your Mac, your iMac, or your MacBook with a feature called Sidecar. Now, Samsung has a similar feature called Second Screen, but it's not available on the Tab A8. Now, looking at the app selections, both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store are full of choices for pretty much everything you wanna do. There are some specific popular creative apps like LumaFusion, Procreate, and Affinity Photo that are only available on the iPad. LumaFusion did announce that they'll be releasing an Android version, so that's good news. As far as operating system support, Samsung promises three generations of OS updates. Now, in contrast, Apple provides much longer support. And just as an example, my iPad Air 2, which I got eight years ago, is still supported by iPad OS 15. And moving on to battery life, both tablets have pretty good performance. And for the most part, I can get through an entire day with both. Of course, I can't sit down and play eight hours straight of PUBG without having to recharge either one of them. But for the most part, for what I do every day, I get through a full day. The 
iPad 9 probably does get the edge here and I'm currently working on a more detailed test. When it comes to gaming, I'm able to play all of my games on both tablets. Less demanding games are going to pretty much play on any current tablet, so that's not really an issue, but even more demanding games like PUBG and COD Mobile ran smoothly on both. For PUBG on the Tab A8, I was able to set graphics to smooth or balanced and then the frame rate to ultra. I could also set the graphics to HD and then the frame rate to high. With the iPad 9, I could go all the way up to 90 frames per second with the graphics set to smooth. I could go up to extreme frame rate with balanced graphics or all the way up to ultra HD with frame rate set to ultra. Now switching to COD Mobile, the Tab A8 tops out at medium graphic quality and high frame rate, while the iPad 9 can go to very high graphic quality and max frame rate or very high graphic quality and very high frame rate. So in both games, the iPad 9 has the better options. Now we talked a little bit about the audio early on in the video, but if you plan on using your speakers to play games where you need directional sound, the Tab A8 will perform better. Now both tablets have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which gives you the option of using a wired gaming headset for perfect lag-free audio. It also means that you can charge the tablet and use the wired headset at the same time without needing any type of adapter or a splitter. Now both tablets also worked great with an Xbox controller and Xbox Game Pass, and I was able to play all of my favorite games as long as I had a fast and stable internet connection. I'm going to give the slight edge to the iPad 9 because in my opinion, it has a better display and I had less issues with the controller disconnecting. Now I wanna talk about the different configurations and also address resale value. I'll be using the prices from the Samsung and Apple stores, but you can usually find better prices by using the links in the description. The Tab A8 is available with 32 gigabytes gigabytes of storage and three gigs of RAM for 230 bucks, then 64 gigabytes for $280 and 128 gigabytes of storage for $330. And both of those models come with four gigabytes of RAM. The iPad 9 comes with either 64 gigabytes for 329 or 256 for 459. And both of them come with three gigabytes of RAM. So both tablets are also available in cellular models. And remember that the Tab A8 has a micro SD card slot that can be used to expand the internal storage and that this storage will be used for files and not for apps. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that at least in the US, the iPads hold their resale value for longer. And at the same time, Samsung has some really great trade-in options. And I'd love to know what the situation is where you live. So which one of these tablets is a better option for you? So the Tab A8 starts at $230 for 32 gigabytes of internal storage, although I would really only recommend that to someone who's just using it to stream content, to surf the web, work with some basic apps, and then play a few small games. If we're comparing the $330 models, then the Tab A8 comes with 128 gigs of internal storage, plus the micro SD card slot, which can expand the internal storage by up to one terabyte. It has a more modern design, facial recognition, recognition, a nice display, and a better speaker system. The iPad 9 comes with 64 gigabytes of internal storage. It can be upgraded to 256 for an additional $130. Has a better display, touch ID, Apple Pencil support, a better camera system, it's noticeably more powerful and more responsive, and it has better graphic performance for gaming. Now you should see how the iPad 9 compares with the Galaxy Tab S7 FE. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say? Buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.